We will start uh, with file item one, which is ACR 99 by Assembly Member Lowe. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Madam Chair and members. Appreciate the opportunity uh, to present uh, to you ACR 99, which is a resolution uh, with respect to conversion therapy. Uh, as many of you may recall in previous years of introductions of a number of uh, formative legislative proposals to ensure that we protect all people, including members of the LGBT community uh, with respect to their identity and who they are as individuals. Um, last year, we had Assembly Bill 2943 in which we had bipartisan support, including from members of this committee, uh, to ensure that we qualified conversion therapy as a fraudulent practice. Uh, part of that conversation was such that we also um, were able to meet a number of individuals in the community throughout the entire state, uh, particularly evangelicals who would join in hands with members of our community to state that uh, we do not believe in conversion therapy and we would also condemn it equally as well. We put a pause on that piece of legislation last year and believed that uh, we would have an opportunity to come back uh, this year with the resolution uh, joining hands uh, with those in the evangelical community to also uh, speak in support of who we are as a community and as individuals with respect to qualifying conversion therapy as a harmful practice. And so before you, you have a, a, a resolution that enjoys bipartisan support uh, with evangelical um, leaders throughout the entire state to also talk about the importance of recognizing the LGB community as uh, community members as who they are. Uh, without sacrificing their integrity or conviction. And uh, with respect, we'll ask for I vote and support, uh, but with me have other individuals to also speak in support as well. Thank you. And I do recall we had a rather robust hearing last time uh, when this was, uh, what was it, AB 20? 20 2943. 43. So I think some of us here who, well, let's see, I look around. I think I'm the only one who remembers that hearing. Uh, but certainly uh, appreciate that you bring this back uh, today in the form of a resolution. Two witnesses, two minutes each. You go ahead and choose who you want to begin. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rick Sabur, and I'm the executive director of Equality California, which for 20 years has led the Golden State's fight for full lived LGBTQ equality. I'm here today in recognition of the survivors of so-called conversion therapy, a dangerous and deceptive practice with no scientific basis, which can cause lifelong damage. I'm also here with immense gratitude for the many hours of collaboration that went into this resolution. Collaboration between and among LGBTQ leaders, including LGBTQ people of faith, faith leaders, and those who have been affected uh, adversely by conversion therapy. In 2012, Equality California co-sponsored the bill that ultimately prohibited licensed mental health providers from performing so-called conversion therapy on young adults, uh, people under the age of 18. Since then, 18 other states have enacted similar laws demonstrating a growing national consensus that these practices are dangerous and damaging. Unfortunately, these practices are still carried out by people who are entrusted to care for the emotional and psychological well-being of others across the country and still right here in California. LGBTQ people attempt suicide more often, experience depression more often, and experience homelessness more often than people who are not LGBTQ. Why? It's because LGBTQ people are too often told that there's something wrong with them and us, and the practice of conversion therapy sends that message loud and clear and results in psychological abuse and damage that can caught, literally cost lives. Let me be clear, there's nothing wrong with me, there's nothing wrong with LGBTQ people and the nation's leading professional uh, medical and mental health associations, the American Psychiatric Association, the American Psychological Association, the American Council so Counseling Association, National Association of Social Workers, and the American Medical Association have rejected conversion therapy as unnecessary, ineffective, and harmful. And today we respectfully ask that you do the same. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next witness. Good afternoon. My name is Tim Rimel, and uh, I'm a, a conversion therapy survivor and author. And I'm sure you've heard of the stories like mine as a conversion therapy survivor, but what makes mine different is that I was also a conversion therapy leader. I attempted suicide before going into conversion therapy because that was my last hope. And so I needed something that was going to reconcile my faith with my reality. 
And during the time that I was there, I truly believed that God had changed me. And in fact, I believed it so much that after I went through conversion therapy, I went on staff with this organization and I worked for them for five years. During that time, I got married. Eventually, I had two beautiful daughters. And I traveled the nation preaching this message that I wholeheartedly believe that there is freedom from homosexuality through Jesus Christ. Ten years after I left the ministry, off the stage and away from the spotlight, reality set in for me and my life came crashing down. And I thought there was something so deeply flawed within me that I was unredeemable and unreachable and unlovable. And I have to say, it's been nearly 25 years since I was involved in conversion therapy. But just because you walk out of the pastor's office or you close the therapist's door doesn't mean those messages go away. They don't. I've been fortunate enough to be with the man who's now my husband for nearly 10 years. And I can tell you that many of the, the problems that we've had in our relationship stem from those messages that I heard over and over again in my evangelical upbringing and in the conversion therapy movement. And at times, they've almost destroyed us. Conversion therapy is disruptive. It's destructive. And the effects of that are felt in people sometimes many, many years after they leave. It affects families and it affects individuals. What I wish someone had told me 30 years ago was that I could have live a life of faith. I could have a loving, healthy relationship with somebody of the same sex. I wish somebody had told me you're lovable no matter what, and you're acceptable and you're valuable and your voice needs to be heard. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Are there other witnesses here in support of this resolution? If you would step forward with your name and affiliation only, please. Jessica Stender on behalf of Equal Rights Advocates and Strong Support. Thank you. Anyone else in support? All right, uh, those in opposition, if you'd like to step forward. Good afternoon, you may proceed. Good afternoon. I'm Dean Broyles, an attorney with the National Center for Law and Policy. You have my opposition letter. Government has no jurisdiction to dictate to the church what it should believe, do, say, or how it counsels citizens. Why, why is that true? The First Amendment embedded in the Constitution's Bill of Rights guarantees our unalienable and fundamental civil rights, including the free exercise of religion and the freedom of speech. ACR 99 is an attempt to control the beliefs, words, and practices of citizens regarding the controversial and sensitive topic of human sexuality. It targets, chills, and suppresses free speech and religious free exercise. Furthermore, it unfairly disparages religious groups and people blaming them for mental health problems and high suicide rates in the LGBT community. The right to dissent is a fundamental American right, robustly protected by the First Amendment. This state does not have the authority to define a one-size-fits-all sexual ideology or to enforce its sexual orthodoxy on people of faith. Sexual orientation and gender identity are not fixed. They are fluid. People can change, people do change. Our citizens, especially those who have faith, should remain free to have the choice to seek out change allowing therapy without the state trying to destroy the choice through Orwellian legislation like AB 2943 and ACR 99. Government officials pondering this resolution should be mindful of two Supreme Court, court cases and rulings last year. In Master's Peace Cake Shop, the Colorado uh, the state of Colorado found, was found to have unfairly targeted Jack Phillips' Christian religious beliefs about marriage, holding that even subtle departures from religious government, religious neutrality violate the First Amendment. Furthermore, in Nifla versus Becerra, the court overturned California's AB 775. Why? Because it unfairly targeted pregnancy care centers and unconstitutionally compelled government-sanctioned speech. ACR 99 is religiously intolerant, it's not inclusive of people of faith and is a dangerous step towards the destruction of diversity in California. People of faith should not be made to feel like unwelcome outsiders in this state. Thank you. I strongly urge you to vote against this resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next witness, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I am Phyllis Tolles, representing Dr. Samuel Rodriguez with the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference, where we have 42,000 plus churches. 
I sit before you as a friend and confidant to those who have sought and received professional, biblical-based counseling from Christians who see the image of God in every human being, regardless of sexual orientation, to protect the freedom of those individuals who seek such guidance, to champion the right to be light by reconciling righteousness with justice, sanctification with service, holiness with humility, and truth with love to engage, empower, and enrich every human life through the transformative power of God's word, to advocate an individual's freedom to choose, question, and change. ACR 99 would prohibit these same individuals their freedom to seek professional help through programs that provide safe, legal, therapeutic services. Jesus Christ died and rose again so that every human being created in the image of God could have the freedom to not be controlled by their physical or sexual desires, but rather exercise their right to change, not only in their sexuality, but all aspects of their life. As a proud mother and grandmother, if these were my grandchildren, I would want them to be free to seek counseling from organizations and religious leaders in line with their personal values. The state does not have the right to legislate, legislate such deep, deeply personal matters. On behalf of the 42,000 plus churches, my grandchildren and yours, we're asking you to vote no on ACR 99 or abstain. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other witnesses in opposition, if you would like to uh, step forward, give your name and affiliation only, please. Hang in there. Greg Burt with the California Family Council in opposition. Thank you. Todd Dornan, pastor of the Denair Missionary Baptist Church. I oppose ACR 99. Thank you, sir. Senators, thank you. My name is Jonathan Keller, president of California Family Council. I first off want to say to Assemblyman Lowe, thank you for your outreach to the faith community. We greatly appreciate the efforts he's made to hear our concerns. Respectfully, we still must oppose the bill today. Thank you. Thank you. Any other witnesses in opposition? All right, we'll bring it back to the dais. Senator Umberg, you had a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. A question to the opposition. I listened to your testimony, and so then I, I actually read the resolution, and I'm wondering what parts of the resolution specifically are you opposed to? Because I read the portions that said that the legislature calls upon religious leaders to counsel LGBTQ matters from a place of love and compassion. Is that, are you opposed to that part? No. Are you opposed? I'm sorry, go ahead. You are? No, we're not at all oh. opposed to love and compassion. Okay, what, what part specifically are you opposed to? Um, I, I'm against the part that, that blames faith communities for the stigma and high suicide rates and the mental health problems. Um, I think the social science doesn't support that. As a matter of fact, it's the opposite. I'm against the parts of the bill that call on uh, religious leaders and pastors and churches specifically to... Um, take an affirming position on LGBT issues when our faith counsels us in a different direction. So we're not against love. We're not against compassion. Um, we just have a different perspective on sexual issues. And so um, it's not the job of the state to tell the church what to believe or how to counsel. I, I don't see that in the resolution. What you just described, I simply don't see that in the resolution. That's why I was asking about specific portions that you disagreed with. Um, so, for example, it calls upon religious leaders to model equitable treatment of all people of the state. Is that what you're opposed to? Not, not at all. Not okay. at all. As a matter of fact, we're for love, we're for compassion, we're for equitable treatment. Um, we just believe that the state, this is the first bill that I've ever seen in my 25 years in the state of California, where specifically, even though it's a resolution that doesn't have binding effect in teeth, it calls out churches and religious leaders to take a specific perspective on morality and sexuality, human sexuality. And that is not the job of the state. And so as a resolution of the state, even bills that don't have teeth, bills that chill religious free exercise or bills that chill religious speech are also unconstitutional. The court said last year in the uh, 
case in, out of Colorado I cited earlier, that even subtle departures from neutrality of the state towards religious groups is unconstitutional. This is more than just subtle uh, lack of neutrality towards religious beliefs and practices. It's specifically telling us what to believe, how to preach, and how to counsel, and that's blatantly unconstitutional. Well, thank and you. just Madam, to build on what, sorry, my, what my colleague is saying, with respect to the gentleman I think here, it would limit other people's freedom to be able to seek that same counsel. We believe in the right for choice. So if I am or if my grandchildren, I use that again as an example, I'm a proud mother of two and two grandchildren. If they were in the LGBT community, I would want them to have the freedom to seek religious counsel that aligns with their values and belief system. And this would take that away from them. We're not saying that we're opposed to anyone that we don't love. Of course we do. But we also want the right for those who say, I desire change or at least to question it and to seek that counsel aligned with our values based upon the Bible, the right to do that. Well, Ma Madam Chair, uh, all of us here uh, come to this job with experiences of our own, and we all apply those experiences to our perspective. And I think all of us believe that the state has a duty to protect certain citizens. And I come here with a perspective from watching my brother-in-law go through conversion therapy and the harm that it did to him and to its enti his entire family. So, so I believe the state does have a very strong interest in preventing that kind of harm. And having witnessed it myself, I, I'm in strong support, and I commend you, Assemblymember Lowe, for bringing this forward. As thank, thank you. Excuse me. There's no question. Excuse me. There's no question pending. Thank, thank you, Senator Umberg. Senator Jones, you have a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and I, I, I thank uh, Senator Umberg for actually bringing up that exact paragraph, because it was uh, kind of the paragraph that I signal, singled out as as having some challenges with, and, and the, the paragraph does um, say a place of love and compassion, which in my experience as a former pastor, um, you know, mo most of the folks that I know in that profession do come from that angle of love and compassion, regardless of what the eventual outcome of the, of the counseling is. But where the paragraph goes too far, if you kept quoting on there is, it's the state through the ACR requiring those counselors uh, in a place of love and compassion to also acknowledge the psychological and other harms of conversion therapy. Well, that's the debate. And um, I think that th that's the, if, if I'm understanding the opponents properly and correctly, that's the part of the ACR that, the, the biggest part of the ACR that goes too far is the state compelling them to acknowledge the harms of conversion therapy when these folks actually have come from a background and a life experience of seeing positive results of that conversion therapy. So um, I just wanted to put that on the record. I might have a couple of questions later, but I just wanted to address that since it was. At Thank you. Senator Borges followed by a Senator Gonzalez and then Senator DeRazzo. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, I think the fact that this is a resolution as opposed to uh, a substantive piece of legislation um, speaks volumes, but unfortunately, I think when we have highly controversial topics, you know, even symbolic uh, discussions take on gravity. Um, I kind of wanted just to reaffirm the framework that we're uh, seeing this issue uh, with. We're talking about a private setting in a church or a ministry, is that correct? It's not a public setting. Correct. And is it voluntary? Correct. And is it confidential? Correct. Yes. Is, are you aware of ministries con conditioning their membership of that individual um, to this counseling and ultimately through a conversion therapy process? Conditioning them? Yeah, meaning that they would lose their membership in the mosque, the temple, the church? No. All right. Um, I happen to have been reared Greek Orthodox, fairly conservative Christian uh, Greek Orthodox. I happen to have a lot of uh, folks uh, who are friends in the LGBTQ uh, community. Um, I have reconciled absolutely my faith with my ability to express my loving compassion to, um, to, to my friends and those outside of my faith. 
and I know of folks who also um, may be homosexual or, or within this community who are also members of the church. So there's a reconciliation. Maybe that works for some, maybe not for, for everyone. But the issue here, at least in my opinion, is that we have to acknowledge that there is a freedom of religion and that there's a freedom of expression. And so from a legal standpoint, while I haven't weighed in on conversion therapy and frankly don't know too much about it, I must confess, maybe it is strict, maybe it is uh, uh, counterproductive. I, I'm not in the field of, of that area of study, but just from a freedom of expression and a freedom of religion standpoint, I don't know how we would want to uh, undo uh, the protections that our Constitution allows uh, for those in the faith community, given the fact that everything that you just said is voluntary, confidential, and they're not conditioning their membership in that religious institution. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Gonzalez. Thank you. And. Um, I am I'm always grappling just personally because this is a very uh, difficult uh, topic uh, for many of the residents that I represent who are Long Beach residents, many of which who do identify as LGBTQ, who have gone through conversion therapy and have seen very poor, poor and detrimental results. And so I come from that lens, first and foremost, um, as a representative that has a, a multitude of, of uh, not only friends, but people that I represent. So I thank you, Assemblymember Lowe, for bringing this forward and for your uh, supporters for bringing this forward and sharing their story, as well as the opponents for giving us a glimpse as to what the uh, counter arguments are. But I just want to belabor one specific uh, point here in the resolution, also called out by uh, Senator Umberg, but California law already recognizes that performing this type of conversion therapy on young persons is ineffective, unethical, and harmful. So this isn't out of our wheelhouse to be adding this additional resolution um, that would include, um, you know, this uh, all of the the uh, items that we've discussed here today. Um, so I'll just uh, belabor that point that we already are recognizing this uh, first and secondly, as you read the analysis, this isn't so much an issue of freedom of speech as it is uh, on unprofessional conduct um, as classified here in the, in the response um, to, to uh, this type of therapy overall. So we're not uh, impeding on any of that whatsoever on, on free speech as we are on unprofessional conduct. So I would just say that and I would just say I hope um, overall that we don't have to continue uh, these discussions and that we can formally um, have uh, conversion therapy, in my opinion, completely out of our uh, wheelhouse uh, here in California. This is what we believe in. I believe they're really California values. So thank you very much. Thank you. Senator DeRazzo, followed by Senator Monning. Um, I guess for me, it's, uh, there's two issues. One is of uh, making sure that we protect uh, the, the freedom of all Californians to be treated with their respect and not to feel that they are isolated, that they are in danger, um, particularly our minors. I think there's a lot of protections that we have to, as government, get involved with. So that's one, uh, to, to be treated with uh, respect and the dignity of, of all each individual human being. There's also a second, which is public safety. And that is also very much within the scope of government. So I guess I'd like to ask, uh, because I too, like others, don't know the details, but if, if there's a short answer to the public safety uh, aspect, uh, which is again, very much within the scope of government, if any one of the proponents could uh, talk about that. I mean, I, I think one of the rationales for um, the bill that was brought in 2012, as well as uh, what's behind the resolution, is the fact that these practices have been found by all of the medical associations as being harmful to the people that are engaged in them, that it results in psychological harm, high rates of depression, um, and those are things that the medical and psychological experts have found. Um, you know, this resolution is one that I think calls on um, 
everyone in California to think about the way they are conducting their activities uh, and have an open mind and learn about practices that may be conversion therapy or may be like conversion therapy and think about the harm that it has as they conduct themselves. It is a resolution. Um, and I think the, um, uh, you know, the original bill and action related to conversion therapy is within the scope of government because these have, found, have been found to be helpful, have been found to be harmful, and government has a role in protecting people from harm, just as it does in consumer protection and those kinds of laws. Thank you very much. So those are the two issues that bring me to support this resolution. Thank you all for your work and chairwoman excuse me no you haven't been asked a question senator morning uh you're next thank you thank you madam chair uh, i too want to thank the author and proponents and opponents for sharing your views and i just want to underscore the interpretation that i have of this resolution it in no way seeks to violate the practice of religion or the privacy in consultation uh in counseling sessions or the confidentiality of those counseling sessions. Uh, what it does do is encourage strongly that conversion therapy not be a component of that counseling because of what science has found to be potentially damaging. And I think with respect to my colleague's question, the public health concern is that damage can lead to attempted suicide, mental health uh, challenges and disorders, which do become a state of California interest. If we're paying the bill for those treatments, um, responses, public safety uh, reactions, first responder reactions to people who have maybe been encouraged to pursue a path that again, science and medicine, the American Psychological Association haven't speculated, they have found and documented harmful impacts. What we're trying to do is protect the public safety with absolute respect for religious freedom and the confidentiality of those counseling sessions. Uh, and so I will be supporting this at the appropriate time and want to thank the author for advancing this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Ryan. We have a motion by Senator Stern. Do you have another question? Yes. I did want to give the opponents a quick uh, opportunity to uh, respond to the science and public safety comments because I do believe that Mr. Broyles in his opening comments did mention science um, as part of his uh, comments and I just want to know if, if you had, uh, and, and let me caveat, condition my question with that. Um, I recognize and admit that the faith community has not always been uh, good actors in this arena. Um, there are obviously in, in every arena of American debate, there's good actors and bad actors and people that make positive steps and people who make negative steps and have a negative impact on our culture. Um, Assemblyman Lowe has worked very hard on this, uh, on his legislation, on this uh, ACR. I think I can credit him more than anybody I know of in California for breaking down the wall of tension between the LGBT community and the church uh, and people of faith, as I know he has built very positive relationships with uh, many pastors that I know personally, and he's worked very hard, and I think he's demonstrated the love and compassion that, that he's expressing here in his uh, ACR. Uh, but we are debating the language of the ACR today. And it's been brought up, the, the science and the, and the public safety. So um, I think it's appropriate to give the, the opponents an opportunity to answer to that. If they have an answer, if they don't, that's fine too. Um, my opposition to the ACR remains the same. I'm concerned with that particular language in that paragraph. Um, but with that, I'll yield to the opponents to answer to, to those two questions. So the specific questions are the whole issue, the claims that science and medicine um, uh, indicate that there is, a, a de or debunks or disagrees with the notion that the therapy works and you'd like a response on that yeah, the issue? Two, the two things that the proponents were able to answer to was the science and the public safety. Right. I'd like to have the opponents have the same opportunity. Very good. Through the chair. Thank you. Uh, 
I, I'm a constitutional attorney who practices at the U.S. Supreme Court. I'm not an expert on the science, but I have reviewed some of the science and read articles about it. And um, the, it's fundamentally unfair to blame the faith community for uh, the poor mental health outcomes and all the stigma and problems relate and suicide rates related to LGBT issues. Um, there's a lot of other issues going on there besides faith, people's stigma or, or perceived stigma. Um, w however, in my area of expertise though, it, it, is the pickup case, which was referred to earlier, I'd like to briefly address. And that, the pickup case was the case with, that went to the Ninth Circuit about the minor, uh, the minor conversion therapy ban. And it was upheld at the Ninth Circuit. And it, the, the only reason it was upheld at the Ninth Circuit is because of this professional speech exception. And the court said, well, normally we wouldn't allow you to regulate the speech here of a psychologist or psychiatrist counseling a minor but we, we're gonna recognize this novel professional speech exception. The problem with relying on the pickup case, which the legislative analysis did that I read late last night for today, is that the pickup case has been overruled by the case I cited earlier, which is NIFLA versus Becerra. Um, the pickup case wasn't specifically overruled, but the whole reason for it, which, which was a professional speech exception to the First Amendment protections was overruled. And so um, my, my great concern here today is I've heard very little concern, except from a few of the senators, about the First Amendment and about the free exercise of religion and freedom of speech. We seem very eager in the name of public safety or perceived threats to public safety to kind of do away with the First Amendment. If we do away with the First Amendment, folks, all of our freedoms go out the door. And so we've gotta be very careful when we use public safety arguments and smash the First Amendment. California was brought up short in Nifla versus Becerra and they had to pay over a million dollars in attorney's fees. I was co-counsel at the US Supreme Court in Nifla versus Becerra. And the, in the letter I submitted to this committee, the, the, um, the court very clearly said it, um, in a concurring opinion by Justice Kennedy, who just retired, he said, it is not forward thinking to force individuals to be an instrument for fostering public adherence to an ideological point of view they find unacceptable. It is forward thinking to begin by reading the First Amendment as ratified in 1971, to un or, sorry, 1791, to understand the history of authoritarian government as the founders then knew it to confirm that history since then shows how relentless authoritarian regimes are and their attempts to stifle free speech and to carry those lessons onward as we seek to preserve and teach the necessity of freedom of speech for the generations to come. And I conclude with this, governments must not be allowed to force persons to express a message contrary to their deepest convictions. Freedom of speech secures the freedom of thought and belief this law imperils those liberties. ACR 99 imperils those liberties. So do not, please do not take the First Amendment lightly. Thank you, and I would just simply add, this committee doesn't take the First Amendment lightly. We've heard uh, from a variety of different groups, uh, those including who want to speak at Berkeley and have raised questions about um, the protections to the other people that, that have uh, had somewhat incendiary speech and this committee has uh, confirmed their right to have that speech. So uh, that is a point that I think is very important. I think we all hold it dear. I think we disagree with you on whether this is an attack on the First Amendment or whether it just simply urges through the science which um, I appreciate the question and the issue of uh, science and medicine about the validity of this type of uh, con conversion therapy. Um, again, as uh, Senator Umberg mentioned, it talks about coming from a place of love, which I believe is what the church espouses. Uh, it doesn't mandate that you do any particular thing. It is, I think, more in the spirit and asking that you 
um, consider that as you go forward to consider the science and what have you. And as a constitutional law expert, I think you'll have to agree that the definitions of the First Amendment vis-a-vis -vis religion have been sort of turning on their head a little bit over the last few years. So uh, it remains to be seen how this is interpreted going for the First Amendment and vis-a-vis -vis religion as being interpreted going forward. Um, but again, uh, the First Amendment, like all amendments, is not uh, absolute. And uh, I don't think, though, that even in this case, we are, we are at a point of mandating what you can and cannot do, what you can and cannot think. But it does uh, talk about the science. It does talk about the impacts. And it asks that you come from a place of love and, and, uh, and respect. So um, I, th I appreciate it as a First Amendment lawyer, uh, but I don't think that, that we have gotten to that point where we really are imposing in any way on the First Amendment. So I want to be that, make that clear as the chair of this committee. And if you'd like to respond briefly, please feel free. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Jones, for that question. With respect to the conversion therapy in preparation for this, not being very familiar with it myself, I talked to a uh, colleague of mine who is an African-American female who is a board-certified medical physician and a former practicing lesbian to better understand conversion therapy. And so I do not stand here or sit here as a representative advocating for anything that would devalue, dehumanize anyone, or would make them feel less than. That's not what we're about. That's not what I'm about. Jesus is about love. And so any kind of therapy that would seek to say you're a bad person, you're a wrong person, or again, devalue you, is not what we're advocating for. But we are advocating, or what we are opposing, is the language which was so eloquently called out that would prohibit my ability as a pastor, my colleagues' ability as a pastor, relative to medical science, from someone's opportunity and freedom to say, if I want to seek therapeutic counseling that is safe, legal, that values me as an individual, if I want to seek transformative counseling through a Christian counselor that I should have that freedom to do so. So my thing would be, let's just take that one section out of ARC 99 and I think we'll be all set. Thank you. I do think though, again, nothing is prohibited in this resolution. It, uh, it's simply an encouragement a statement uh, to counsel with love and a knowledge of the overwhelming scientific consensus, which I don't think has been refuted here. I don't think there's been any experts coming in to say this, uh, this science is not real. Um, that, uh, uh, again, simply ask for uh, coming from a place of uh, love and knowledge that this is of concern. So uh, I don't think it impedes on the First Amendment. You know, maybe wrong, maybe they will give you some more business to, to keep you busy. Um, but I think at this point in time, um, unless there are any other questions, we have a motion. Uh, Assembly Member Lowe, would you like, uh, did you want to speak, Senator Stern? No, okay. Uh, if you'd like to close, Assembly Member Lowe. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues, for the opportunity to speak on this. Just for context, because it appears that a uh, number of uh, committee members perhaps weren't here in the previous year for Assembly Bill 2943. In 2012, the state made a strong statement that we said, yes, there's harmful practice of conversion therapy for minors 18 and under. That is the law of the land that has been upheld multiple times uh, since 2012, which, by the way, 15 other states have also, since 2012, also passed similar types of legislation recognizing the science of all of these other associations. Uh, last year then, we said, well, we want to protect all people, not just minors, and that's why we narrowly focused and tailored Assembly Bill 2943 last year on conversion therapy as a fraudulent practice, which is that if there's a financial transaction, that would be considered a fraudulent practice. But those individuals who have testified here today in opposition would still be able to practice the conversion therapy should they, should they wish to do so, so long as that, there's not that financial transaction. Uh, that piece of legislation passed both the Assembly and the Senate, but in those conversations, we also had an opportunity to meet with evangelical leaders because I thought it was very important to encourage that type of uh, stronger approach in incorporating many of the different values of all people. 
as you can imagine then, uh, uh, much to the angst of our sponsors and frankly of uh, Equality California, we paused and I held that bill. Uh, it was ready to go to the governor's desk for signature, but we held that bill. And people said, why? Equality California said, what are you doing? I said, I want to pause because I think we can do this together. I think we can be transformative in this conversation because as a result of Assembly Bill 2943 of a fraudulent practice, conversion therapy as a fraudulent practice, a number of faith leaders said, we stand in solidarity with you, but we think this goes just a little bit too far. So could we work together with you in coming up with some language? So what you have before you today encapsulates the work in partnership Counter to what you heard from the testimony is actually contrary to that. In fact, this was done in collaboration with faith leaders throughout the entire state, to which I know Senator Jones knows I have traveled throughout the entire state to meet with evangelical leaders to get their support on this piece of resolution, inclu including Kevin Manoa, the former president of the National Association of Evangelicals. So again, what you have before you here is the work of a collaborative approach with members of the faith community throughout the entire state to say we stand in solidarity with you and hopefully we can build off of this working relationship to identify how we can work together collaboratively moving forward from a place of love, compassion, and recognizing all people. And let me just finally just say that, that uh, this is a non-binding resolution. This is a non-binding resolution. So the opposition was opposed last time in which they were not necessarily at the table and it was narrowly scoped to a financial transaction under the Consumer Legal Remedies Act, very narrow in scope. And yet even with evangelical leaders, they are still opposed. Some, some are still opposed. So it's just very clear to me that there will be a conversation of a difference of this. I'm sure the opposition would still be opposed to marriage equality or my opportunity to adopt or to donate blood or be part of the Boy Scouts or to serve in the military. We've already settled this. But again, what you see here before you is a collaboration of the work that I think I'm hopeful that we can be, um, we can stand on this in a transformative way to say that we stand together and united in these efforts and build off of this as well. But again, this notion of conversion therapy is antithetical to my very existence. This notion that one could be changed is damaging to all people that somehow that we should be changed or we should seek this out, but rather we should be accepted. And so this statement of affirmation is of love and compassion and respectfully ask for your vote. Thank you very much. All debate having ceased, please call the roll. The uh, motion is uh, the uh, item be ad uh, adopted as amended. Please call the roll. Jackson. Aye. Jackson, aye. Borges. Borges, no. Durazo. Aye. Durazo, aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Gonzalez, aye. Jones. Jones, no. Monning. Aye. Monning, aye. Stern. Aye. Stern, I Umberg. Aye. Umberg, I Wykowski. Wykowski, I. All right, seven to two, that measure passes. Thank you all. Appreciate your testimony.